What's up guys, it's your boy Nathaniel Messiah. So, in today's video as you saw by the title, I'm going to be explaining to you how I lost 20 pounds of fat during quarantine. But before we get into the video, I've just got a couple of announcements to make. Quickly, before we get into the video, I just want to let you guys know that Gymshark is having a huge sale tomorrow at 7pm, British Standard Time. Gymshark is having a sale with up to 50% off selected lines. Um, so make sure that throughout the sale, you use the link in my description that will really support me. So, first link in my description, use that link, shop through there. You're going to get up to 50% off selected lines in the Gymshark sale. Don't miss it. It's going to be live for 24 hours. So yeah, tomorrow, 7 p.m., be there. And then also, if you guys want to keep updated with me, make sure that you follow me on Instagram. Make sure you subscribe. Also, uh, trying to, you know, road to 100k. We just hit 50k not long ago. Trying to get that subscriber count up. And yeah, with that out of the way, we can get straight into the video. So essentially, just before um, quarantine started, I was pretty much had been bulking and maintaining. I was planning to compete in powerlifting, so I bulked up to the night to about 92 kilos, and my class is going to be the 93 kilo class. So that's kind of where my weight was around, and my physique looked pretty all right in good lighting. But if I wasn't in good lighting, it didn't look pretty good at all and then i finally pretty much noticed this when i did my outdoor workout video and i was trying to get a thumbnail and i wasn't in the gym now so i didn't have this crazy king's gym lighting and i realized oh i'm not looking very good i'm trying to take pictures there's like zero abs and stuff like that i managed to like kind of twist to the side and put my arm up against the side so i got a decent thumbnail out of it but that is really not how i looked on the day and that just goes to show you how much angles and lighting can really change something so from then i decided yo nathaniel you need to properly go on a cut so i decided that i would dedicate quarantine to going on a cut and i accepted the fact that my training wasn't going to be exactly the same so i did run the risk of losing a bit of muscle but Having done the cut now, I think it even looks like I've gained muscle from when I was on my bulk. Like certain areas, especially like my arms, for example, definitely look bigger now than they were even when I was bulked. So I think it's safe to say I didn't lose any muscle really and I might have even gained muscle. So today's video, I'm going to explain to you how I did this. I'm going to be breaking this down step by step in terms of my diet, training, supplements and everything else and i'm going to go in that order because that's the order of importance that is most important because without a calorie deficit you're not going to lose weight training is really important also because without the training you're just going to lose all your muscle and then supplements can be important um, because they can just add that little extra tip of the iceberg or make it easier in your cut oh yeah and i hope that through this video you guys can gain a few tips that you can apply to your own cuts maybe if you're trying to cut down for summer or something like that and especially if you're trying to cut down for summer also i've got a fat loss program which is going to be in the link in my description i've also got a muscle game plan and a home plan so whatever your goals are i've got a plan for you so if you want some extra help other than this video get into your goals then make sure you click one of those links but yeah let's get straight into it so diet wise um because of the whole quarantine situation this meant that all of my daily commuting which would you know be burning a few calories walking here and there and things like that that was all gone so this meant that i had to cut my calories low than i would have thought I would have um, because I went on a cut last year and I didn't have to go really any lower than like 2000, 1900 and I was a lot smaller than I am now but with my current weight even though I was at 92 kilos or so I gradually decreased my calories before I was at about maybe 3000 calories a day I gradually decreased it gradually decreased it by maybe by like 100 calories or 200 calories every couple of weeks and that eventually put me down to about 1900 calories to 2000 calories a day and although this seems like a really small amount of food you have to take into consideration the fact that your general overall expenditure during quarantine was lower so if you're going to want to get into a calorie deficit you're going to have to drop lower in terms of your calories than you even think you need to and also i feel like with social media because we see a lot of people who are kind of genetic freaks in the metabolic metabolism department you don't get an accurate picture of what some people actually have to do so i'll remember in um like you might think that say for example someone like chris bum said yeah he's like a huge 240 pound bodybuilder so you must think oh in the cut he still eats a ton of food uh he published he put out his diet and i think i remember seeing when the ad when the calories were tallied up it was about 1800 and something calories so so sometimes it's not even like your metabolism is just that slow it's just a thing where i think we've kind of been fed the wrong image with diet and we don't understand you know what might be needed for you to get into a proper calorie deficit and to make you know 
progress with fat loss so you may need to drop your calories lower than you think you do um, in order for you to lose weight in terms of my diet in particular I started experimenting throughout my cup which is something that I really recommend to a lot of you guys at, at the beginning because I was worried about getting to the end of the day and not having a lot of calories left I would postpone a lot of my calories towards the end of the day um, but this would mean that my workouts weren't very good because if I worked out you know seven or eight or so I barely had any calories and I was saving all my calories literally till like 10 p.m. at night so my workouts weren't very good and B I don't think it's good to have all like the bulk of your calories before bed just because you're not giving yourself those calories throughout the day for you to actually use them and gain that energy and then later I started doing some intermittent fasting for probably about three or so weeks of it and this wasn't strict a strict like 16 hour fast some days are maybe 15 hours some days maybe even 14 but the main thing of that was just trying to postpone my first meal to about 1 or 2 p.m. and I found that with this my productivity was pretty good and things like that but I just kind of got a bit tired of that and I just didn't really want to do that. I enjoyed it when I was doing it but I kind of just wanted a change. So then I went to and what I kind of settled on was literally just having smaller-ish meals but just spreading them throughout the day and just having calories throughout the day and I think why this one worked was because in quarantine you know you're just going to be at home and the temptation is to like you know eat a lot of food snack and stuff like that so if you're having five meals a day you don't really have to snack because you're you're eating meals regularly anyway um so i think that was a big thing and the thing is what really matters is your total daily calories the way that you break your calories down and things like that isn't as important as some people will make it up it's in terms of like the meal timing and things like that as long as you're getting the certain amount of calories to get you into a calorie deficit per day you should be fine and then from there you can just do whatever works for you i know for some people intermittent fasting really works for them because of their lifestyle uh, but if it doesn't work for you then don't do it in terms of training um i was training at home but the main thing of training is with almost any type of training you're going to be able to maintain your muscle as long as you're getting close to failure or to failure uh, if you're not pushing yourself close to or to failure then you are going to run the risk of losing muscle um, because there's not a, going to be an adequate stimulus for you to maintain or even grow muscle um, so let's say so I personally had like a set of dumbbells a pull-up tower and a dip bar um, so that is essentially what I did at home a lot of weighted calisthenics training and then some dumbbell stuff and it was a bit like it was a bit of a higher rep range um, but this wasn't necessarily just to burn fat or anything like that the burning fat isn't really necessarily going to come from your main workouts it's going to come from cardio which I'm going to talk about later and just your calorie deficit in general but in your workouts if you can you'd want to keep your workouts exactly the same but because I couldn't do this that wasn't a possibility so I had to change it up a bit um, but I was still shooting for progressive overload whatever you're doing let's say even you are at home and you're just doing push-ups that's fine you could probably actually maintain a lot of your muscle doing that as long as you're trying to progressively overload if you did 50 last week try and do 51 this week and 52 the next week as long as you're progressively overloading um, you are going to be able to maintain your muscle pretty much on whatever training type that you are on and then when it comes to cardio I really stepped up my cardio because if I didn't consciously do cardio I would literally sit at home because we were in like you know lockdown isolation I would literally just sit at home and not go anywhere so the amount of steps I would get in would be crazy low so I started doing like 45 minutes to an hour walks and the area where I live it's got some like steep incline and stuff like that so I do a lot of incline walking and things like that and I started doing that uh, I had actually had a stretch where I did that every single day for like eight nine days in a row um something like that and that kind of allowed me to bump my calories up a little bit because again 1900 or 2000 calories is not a lot of food so i did bump up my cardio a little bit but you do want to be mindful that the more cardio you're doing the more you run the risk of losing muscle cardio isn't necessarily going to make you lose muscle but you don't want to confuse your body in terms of the adaptation if you're doing a ton of cardio your body is going to want to adapt to get better at that cardio and that is pretty much the opposite adaptation to muscle growth they're kind of going like that so although cardio can assist you in your fat loss you don't want to overdo it um, because you don't want to get conflicting adaptations but yeah during the lockdown um, any cardio that you enjoy would be good so whether this is riding a bike walking which is the one that I chose uh, I wouldn't really recommend running because 
types of cardio which involve uh, more eccentrics and more and more high impact are going to take longer for you to recover from and that is going to impede your training more than something like biking uh, where there's really no eccentric you know load uh, it's just all concentric so you want to find the cardio that's the easiest to recover from so that it doesn't impede your training in any way and then with supplements i forgot to talk about in my diet section that i bumped up my protein significantly i bumped it up to what was probably like 0.7 uh, grams per pound of body weight to about one gram per pound of body weight and this was to preserve as much muscle as possible and within my diet this would have been hard to do with whole foods so I started supplementing with uh, protein powders so I'd have a couple of scoops like once a day something like that so that'd just be an extra 40 grams of protein which would make it easier for me to hit about 190 grams of protein a day um, at first I was just doing having like normal whey protein I think I've got one here yeah, at first I was just doing normal impact whey protein. By the way, if you want anything from my protein, you can use my code Nate35, 35% off. And then I started having um, some of the clear whey. I bought clear whey and I kind of fell in love with that. Um, so either of them are really good, just any type of whey protein. And the thing is, supplements aren't mandatory. You don't need them, but they can help. Um, so that is the main thing with supplements. They're not do or die in that sense. You don't need them. A lot of the ways that supplement companies will try to market their products is that you need them, you don't. Supplements come down to convenience and deficiency. I got that line from a shredded sports science, shout out to James Lenker. Supplements will only really be necessary if you're deficient in something. So let's say um, you're deficient in vitamin D, which by the way is the case for a lot of black people. Um, then it would be a good idea to supplement if you but and then also for convenience it's a lot more convenient just having a scoop of protein than having to cook a whole chicken breast or something like that and it's a lot cheaper as well so it just comes down to as he said convenience and deficiency another thing I want to touch on is I started to eliminate a lot of the you know empty calories throughout the day and for me this came in the form of juice I would drink uh, you know orange juice apple juice and things like that and you don't really think about that stuff where it adds up throughout the day uh, So I started switching over to you know flavored waters and things like that that were kind of like basically zero calorie and no You're not gonna die from sweeteners um, Everything within moderation But yeah, I started switching over to those and that helped me save about you know 300 calories a day of just wasted calories on juice But yeah guys that is pretty much all that I can think of those are the main points of my diet It doesn't have to be as complex as some people make it out to be as long as you're in a calorie deficit you're still training you're still getting your protein you're gonna make progress you're gonna preserve your gains and lose fat i hope you guys enjoyed this video hope you're able to learn something from it and i hope you were able to start your own fat loss transformation and again if you want some more help with that make sure that you purchase my muscle gain plans fat loss plans at home plan and yeah remember the gymshark sale use the link in my description and i'll see you guys in a bit